Okay, so this is the point we arrived yesterday. What I want to discuss today is the behavior, so putting all things together and uh, try to describe what happens to the wall flow passing through singularities and the asymptotic behavior. Before starting anyway, I want to mention a couple of mistakes that I did in the in what I wrote at the blackboard in the last lecture, if you want to correct on possibly your notes, since uh, the part on the blackboard um, is not available, it's only, only the slides are available. Well, one mistake is that at some point when I did the estimates on the curvature and derivatives, at some point I wrote this, that the time derivative of the integral of the j as derivative square of the, of the j derivative in arc length square of the curvature could be bounded after using Gallardo Nirenberg in interpolation inequalities by this guy, 0t integral of st k square 2j plus 3 uh, the S, the XC plus constant integral of K square 2J plus 1 plus a constant. So this was a, a mistake. Actually, this is not there. If you, if you want to correct on your notes. And also, this is my first uh, mistake. A second, uh, well, this is more, make things more precise. Yesterday in the scheme that I showed it to you, at some point I say that uh, when you take a blow up, you get a degenerate regular shrinker. that I never defined what is this degenerate, what does degenerate means actually. And uh, it's actually easy, degenerate simply means that it's the limit of regular networks. Which me and degenerate and code the fact that, uh, for instance, this guy here that we saw, it's a very important shrinker that we call a cross or standard cross. It's, uh, in a way, a degenerate shrinker. It's not a regular shrinker. It's a degenerate regular shrinker because actually you can see it as the limit of these regular networks uh, with angle 120 degrees when uh, you make this curve collapse. So degenerate, in, in simply definition, means the limit of regular networks that yesterday I didn't. I never used this uh, word, but in the, in the survey that uploaded, it's uh, quite a nice way because it suggests that you get it as a limit on regular stuff. Okay, this is just to make things more precise. And now, what I was to want to discuss today is actually how to restart the flow after the singularity. Now, yesterday we finish our uh, description what can, hap can happen at the singularity uh, time or a curve collapsing and in that case you have bounded curvature and that was the, the case where no region are collapsing. So then you can use this uh, theorem by, very nice theorem by Tom and Mann and Andre Neves and Feli Schulze that actually you can find a bracket flow starting from your non-regular um, non networks that actually, from the analysis that we did, only contains, the only bad points are actually four points forming angles on 120 degrees between them. So actually the point 
is uh, how to restart this guy. And uh, now I'm going to give you a, a very rough idea on how they can do it by the means of this theorem. Now let me say only one thing. I think uh, up to now you know what is a bracket flow. Bracket flow it is a variational definition of a flow my mean curvature that actually is defined by means of the formula, the bracket formula, which is actually an inequality in general. And uh, this bracket flow that this theorem produces is a very special bracket flow, in particular because uh, the, it's almost a smooth flow. For every time interval, which is not it doesn't get to zero, we have a really completely smooth flow. It's infinity curves, all the compatibility condition, it's a flow like all the ones we consider in this, uh, this lecture. The only point uh, is at time zero. Only here you, have, you need the concept of bracket flow. Only in, in the interval containing the initial guy here, which is not regular, because immediately this guy opens and becomes something like this. And opens in the direction of the small angles, actually. Moreover, there is, since, as I said, the, the brackets definition of, of uh, mean curvature flow is actually given by an inequality. That inequality allows uh, sudden uh, loss of mass. If your, uh, if your network vanishes immediately, you still have a bracket flow. So actually, this bracket flow is a, is a, flow, is a bracket flow such that the, the total length is, is a continuous function. So there is no sudden loss of mass in this bracket flow. And uh, <coughs> the inequality in bracket formula is actually inequality. Sometimes it's called a special bracket flow. So it's the, the bracket formula, given the variational definition of bracket flow, is actually in, in equal, uh, an equality and not an inequality. So it's a very special bracket flow. And actually, we hope that you can even uh, make the, um, find the other special properties of this very peculiar bracket flow in this situation. Okay, what is the idea that they use in order to, to produce this bracket flow? This is a very nice idea. Technically quite complicated, but the idea is uh, not, so, not so complex. The starting point is that uh, let's do in this situation, which is the easier and actually for this case is the most interesting. If you have your, if actually you have a very special network like this, exactly the cross, the flat straight cross. Okay, there is a, an almost explicit solution, an almost explicit bracket flow that uh, let this guy evolve. The idea is to open, well, to consider. Well, it is known that from a, a corner like this, there is a unique expanding motion by curvature getting out from the cone. It's something that uh, does things like this. It's an expander for curvature flow. But actually, if you consider this guy, forget about this line here, well, it disconnects the network, which is, which actually we don't want that. It's, a, it's actually also a bracket flow. If I take the two, uh, the two curves, expanding curves, and this and this, it's actually still a bracket flow, but it's not connected. So it's possible to perturb this expanding solution and creating an expanding network moving by curvature with angles on 120 degrees which actually is still a, a solution of the, of the curvature flow. So it's, and this guy is connected. This is okay for this special 
network with the, which is straight for a fork junction. So the idea that in the general case where the curves are no more two straight lines, are curved lines, in a way you want uh, to approximate the curved lines with the straight lines here. Because the blow up theorem tells you that the more you get close and close and look at things close to the, to the origin, you actually find exactly the double cross that you have that. So the idea is that you get close enough here in order that the network is getting close to the standard cross, throw away what you have inside, substitute it with the standard cross, only in that ball, put inside this solution here, substitute with this solution, there is a problem in connecting things. So you have to do it in a smaller ball, then you have to do some uh, small curves connecting the outside, which is the original network, curve the network, with the inside, which is uh, the small network given by this part here. You connect them, and then let them evolve by curvature. Because at that, after this uh, replacement, that you replace the inside here with the that guy there, the expanding guy there, then you let it evolve. This, this, uh, this network is, is, a, uh, is a regular network, so you can use the, the standard theorem for regular network, the smooth theorems, so you have an evolution for some time, and that's a delicate point. You want that this evolution doesn't develop singularities for s some uniform amount of time. And then you, this you do as some uh, R level with R, the radius of this ball, then you make it at a smaller level, smaller level, smaller level, and you hope that all these flows, at every level you produce a flow, that all these flows, sending R to zero, converge to some limit flow. If you are able to do that, then you hope that you find out at the end some curvature flow that actually is, the co is a good curvature flow for your original network because you were replacing smaller and smaller ball at the end. You think it in, you can imagine the limit is like you weren't replacing anything and you find actually a, a curvature flow for your original network. This can be done. It's absolutely not easy. A lot of estimates in, uh, in this procedure must be develop a new ones, the estimates that I show to you are not sufficient. You, read, you need estimates on the time of smooth flow and so on. You have to do this gluing operation in a very careful way, actually, in particular in the connection between the, uh, this, these uh, standard guys here with the original guys outside of the ball. And it's in this situation, it's a little bit easier to do it, but the general case is quite complicated because if you have a five points, for instance, you have several possibilities to find an expanding network for a guy like this, for instance. But actually, it can be done. The, the paper is quite tough to read, but uh, it's... Uh, the conclusion is very nice, quite technical. But this can be done, and this is more or less the, I'm not cheating too much, the idea behind the, their proof of this theorem. So approximation with the almost explicit solution when the network has only straight lines. Good? In this case, you only need this special case of the theorem, which is a little bit easier. But actually, in general, as we said, if we have a collapse of a region, yesterday we concluded that uh, under what we call uniqueness of the limit uh, assumption or conjecture, we have a limit which actually gives you some C1 network only with the a non-regular multipoint like this, that uh, about the curvature, you can only say that the curvature is given, is going like one over the 
at a point where d is the arc length, length, arc length distance, intrinsic distance to the, to the, to the multi-junction, multi which actually doesn't get in this theorem. This theorem asks uh, for uh, bounded curvature on the curves getting to the multiple junction. But actually, the proof can be extended to cover also this case. It's actually unpublished, and uh, we check with the uh, Feli Schulze, so uh, I don't know if it will be published uh, or in a note or somewhere, or maybe in the future in an updated version of uh, our survey. But at the moment, it's not available explicitly. But uh, anyway, this case can be covered. So you can also extend and restart the flow, extend the theorem and restart the flow also in the situation where you have a, a collapse of a region. As I said, possibly losing the uniqueness. You remember my very first example that uh, for uh, this guy here, by symmetry reasons, By symmetry reason, if you have an evolution, you also have an evolution of a, the rotation of your evolution is still another evolution. And we hope that uniqueness could hold at least for the generic initial data without so many very special symmetries. Anyway, even if the, you can extend the theorem and cover this case, we, also, we can anyway conjecture there are good uh, evidences to conjecture that also in this case, the curvature of the limit guy is bounded. Not the curvature along the flow converging to the network S of T, but the curvature of what you find at the end. So all these curves are actually bounded curvature. This is only conjecture, but I'm trying to convince you why it's a good conjecture. This guy actually come from, uh, for instance, the collapse of a uh, fiber regions with this curve. Well, they have regular curves, regular network. And the region R is collapsing to this point. Instead, the curves here converge to this curve in the limit. And actually, what is quite uh, easy to conjecture is that uh, the only problem with curvature are not coming from the five curves there. The only problem with curvature are coming from the region collapsing. That shrinking down curvature must go to plus infinity. So you can expect that in all these situations, you can always separate the converging network in a collapsing part where the curvature is unbounded. Like I said, but then that vanish in the limit and non-collapsing part so these five curves, where actually the curvature is bounded inside, up to this point. And then in the limit, since the, this curve, if you forget this and you know that the curvature on these five curves is bounded and take their limit, the, the bound on the curvature pass to the limit, so you expect that the, free, the five curves, which is all you see in the limit, has actually have bounded curvature. At the moment, we are not able to, to prove it, but well, it's a quite natural conjecture to expect that you can always make this uh, separation between the vanishing part and non-vanishing part of your network. The vanishing part is the bad part where the curvature is uh, exploding, but fortunately, at the end, it's gone. And the other part uh, can be treated like we dealt with the case of bounded curvature. Okay, today I will state a lot of open problems and conjecture that actually <laughs> we will be very happy if uh, someone, someone of you have, comes out with a good idea and uh, let us know. So 
This is the standard, the easiest singularity case that I was discussing here, better than my picture. So actually, this is perfectly coherent what the theorem of uh, Mann and Schulz uh, what they produce in this case, which uh, the solution that is produced by that theorem can be analyzed a little bit better, so it's quite detailed, and actually it's quite coherent from, with uh, what we see in the simulation at the very beginning. So there is a collapse and an opening exactly with this central curve exactly as uh, in the opposite direction of the collapse or the, of the collapsed one. There is also actually in this case a hope that uh, should be possible to prove uniqueness that I, in general case is false, but in this case there, are, there is hope to prove uniqueness of the evolution, at least in the framework of this theorem of bracket flow, which is at least will, uh, since uh, when you deal with trees, these are the only singularities that you, that you can uh, that you can encounter. So at least for trees, this would be very nice because uh, at least for the motion of trees, you can conclude the uniqueness of your flow. Okay, so now after this uh, nice of singularities, what I want to discuss, okay, I have my singularities, I restart my flow, then I encounter another singularities, maybe I, I, I have the same analysis, then I restart the flow, then I go on and go on and go on. What I am expecting is that since the flow is decreasing the area, the length, the total length of your network, and the boundary part and fix it, if passing singularity, passing singularity, your flow goes on for every time and does entirely converge to a critical point of the length among the families of network with that fixed endpoint. And uh, in doing this, we define this flow for every time. The only problem in defining this flow for every time if, if the singularity times start to accumulate. So you have a singularity always faster and faster and faster. And uh, this is a problem. It's, uh, well, again, there are evidences that this cannot happen. We have a partial proof and the heuristic argument. We only miss some estimates in order to conclude that this cannot happen. What can actually happen, even if you are able to prove this conjecture, is that the number of singularities is not finite. So if they don't accumulate, you can always go on, go on, go on, and at some point, uh, but still continue to find singularities, singularities. And then you don't, yeah, you don't clear idea if actually you can take a limit at infinity, if your network doesn't stabilize. So actually the stronger conjecture is that actually the number of singular times is actually finite for every initial compact, at least for a tree-like network. The, as you can guess, the collapsing singularity, regions going away, are surely fin finite. Because if initially there are a num finite number of regions, well, at some point, if they start vanishing, at some point, the, your, your network, if they all vanish, becomes a tree. And also because the, the Ilman and Neveschutz theorem it never produces regions. The, the expanders here that you glue in order to restart the flow are always locally trees. So there is no, in this case it's easy, but in general, no new regions uh, can arise after the restarting theorem of Ilman and Schulz. So the number of regions during the flow is always decreasing. And starting from a finite number at the beginning, since your network is compact, at some point, the number of collapsing of region singularities can be finite. Are the other singularities? The singularities where one curve is uh, collapsing and then you have an open other situation, that, uh, that uh, a priori could be not, not, fin not finite. You can have 
infinite number of such singularities. If instead such number is finite, well, at some point the flow becomes smooth, no more singularities. Becomes smooth and the evolving network converge up to a subsequence, asymptotically, to something which is flat, connecting the fixed endpoints, critical for the line function. Sometimes I would call standard configuration. Why this happens this is not so difficult to see. Convergence part is the more delicate. <coughs> well, the fact that uh, what we know that the total area of your network, the very, one of the very first computation, was given like standard curvature flow for curves by this guy here, by the square of the curve, the integral of the square of the curvature. So since uh, if we integrate this, what you get the area at time, the length at time t minus the length, well, length at time zero minus the length at time t is equal to the integral between zero t of the integral of k square And this is clearly positive. So if you send t to plus infinity, this is bounded clearly by L of zero. So we have a uniform bound on that, on that integral. If you send t to plus infinity, supposing your flow is defined for every, for every positive t, then what you get, again, an analogous argument that you have the, an integral for an infinite interval of some guy which is positive, and this integral is bounded by some constant fixed at the beginning. So which means that you can extract a subsequence of times going to plus infinity such that this guy inside is going to zero, which actually means that on this subsequence, your curvature is going to zero in L2, then you do some estimates and uh, lower semi-continuous. If you are able to take a limit, the integral of the curvature square is lower semi-continuous. So in the limit, it must be zero, which means that the limit is made of straight segments with that curvature. Moreover, if you are able to get uh, how it is, because this guy controls the C1. Uh, if, if you have sequence where uh, curvature is bound in L2, you have C1 convergence, C1 lock convergence. Then uh, not only are made by straight segments, but also they are made, uh, the, the limit network uh, keep the herring condition, the 120 degrees condition. So the limit guy, if you're able to take it, it's a, actually a regular network made only of straight segments, which is exactly what is called a Steiner configuration. This is up to a subsequence, since here I extracted a subsequence converging. So possibly change the subsequence you change the limit that you get at the end. But actually, again, what you can expect actually is that this limit is actually unique. So you have full convergence of your sequence to, um, again, another conjecture, but another expected one. OK. If all. This is what actually can be wrong <laughs> if this conjecture is not true. You could have a situation like this. These are quite easy networks. We have this, which is a tree. At some point, this curve here collapses. You get a full point. It opens in the other direction. Then after some time, it collapses again. And uh, reopening, you get the same topological shape. So what you want to avoid is that this oscillation goes on infinite times. So oscillation of shapes. Again, here you have this guy that uh, fish type, so lamp type, collapse of this curve, opening, you get the, what they call an island. Then again, for some reason, this curve collapse, you get this guy again, it opens in another direction, you got another lamp. And again, the oscillation is the one I like the most oscillation between theta and eyeglasses. Again, notice that the corners here are 120 here, 60, 
and now here is that they are 120, 60, they switch it. And then you get a theta again. We don't believe this can happen. And uh, we, only, we are absolutely, our only, only, the only very, very speculative idea about how to avoid this is to find out some uh, mixed uh, combinatoric uh, integral geometric quantity that decreases during the flow of the network. Posit uh, bounded below, decreasing, and decreasing of definite amount at every singularity, at every switching of shape like this. So hoping that in this way, if you find a quantity like that, you can at some point, since you decrease at every singularity of a definite amount, uh, if it is bounded below, you cannot have a lot infinite uh, changing of shapes. But actually we have, at the moment, very few ideas about the possible uh, analytical sh shape of this, um, of this quantity. Okay, now I want to show you and uh, collect also some problems that I mentioned during the, the course and uh, asking you, well, asking you, uh, showing you some other open questions and research direction. Well, the most the most important problem, actually, is to be able to show the multiplicity one conjecture that you saw enters in the whole analysis that I showed to you. We really need this guy. We have a possible line very recently that uh, we hope uh, can be carried on in order to show it. Several, some, some years ago, we were able actually to prove it in a very special situation, very easy one. It's a weak, quite weak conclusion that uh, if for some reason you know a priori that you don't have triple, jun the triple junction collision, well, actually, the multiplicity one conjecture is anyway true. Or if your network has only one or two triple junction, then you are able to prove it. And very possibly, Again, it's quite uh, technical. Very possibly, it should be able if uh, even locally you only have two triple junctions. So the really bad situation that if you are able to do with that, to exclude that, then you, sh you should be able to get the, the full conjecture in general. Situation, it's a bad situation like this where three triple junction go to collide together at the same time. In a situation like this that I, I'm going to, to make the curve straight, but actually think of this curve like they, are, they have some curvature. So in a situation like this, the shape of your network, now I, I, I draw them straight, but think they are a little bit curved. And you have these three triple junction that uh, for some reason are getting close each other. And after some time, they get close and close. You can imagine what you get in the limit. You get this guy. You get curve with multiplicity one and one with multiplicity two. Okay, if I draw them straight, they don't move. So it's not a counterexample. So you'll, if you want to look for a counterexample to multiplicity one conjecture, you actually have to put some curvature here around and hope that this makes your network shrinking down and getting the limit is something like this. Well, we all believe it's not possible, but actually you're not able to exclude it. If you are able to exclude this case, well, like this is the, the worst case. The, the case that possibly there is a possibility that multiplicity one conjecture is false. When three triple junction locally go to collide, actually. If you're able to exclude this case, you are in good shape in order to prove the full conjecture. This is the most delicate situation that 
at the moment you are not able to deal with. Instead, when you have only two triple junction, there is a geometric argument to exclude, uh, well, to prove multiplicity one conjecture. is uh, in a way pushing a little some uh, geometric ideas of Hamilton and, and uh, Wisken. Suppose you are only two tri triple junction. Well, let me do it in general for a network. So you do this, this stuff. You take a couple of points, P and Q, here. Draw a line between P and Q, only if this line doesn't intersect other lines in the middle. Consider the region that you get by the rest of the network and your line, call it A, P, Q. And then you consider this quotient, the distance P, Q. This is the distance in R2 exactly the length of this segment, divided by A, P, Q, the area of this region. Okay, and this is kind of, uh, not exactly, but kind of isoperimetric ratio. We call it, this is also depending on T because this is, your network is moving. Then minimize this guy among all the possible points PQ on your network under this uh, property that the segment doesn't intersect other, other part of the network. And you call it Q of T, it's in a minimum of this guy. Remark can be, can be shown that neither P, neither Q must live in a, the, the, when you take the minimum, the minimum is realized by the couple of PQ far from the triple junction. So you have this guy, okay, this quantity, take the time derivative, Q of T. If this quantity, this time derivative is larger or equal to zero, well, if you take this minimum for a regular embedded network, for instance, for the initial network, this minimum is positive. Because if this minimum is zero, it's a minimum, it is uh, realized. Means that P and Q are the same point. So if the, your initial network is embedded, this minimum is positive. If then you are able to show that this derivative is positive, is non-negative, then it's bounded below uniformly during your flow. Always positive. And uh, when this minimum is positive, your network cannot, at some point, go to touch itself, for instance, doing things like this. Why? Because otherwise I take P from this side and Q on the other side, and I get zero. So this kind of, kind of measure of embeddedness of your network. In particular, if he, this argument, Q of zero, we know that it's larger than zero, and if this holds, so Q of t is always larger than some epsilon the zero, it's another proof that embedded networks cannot lose embeddedness. Moreover, this quantity is scaling invariant. If you look at this. If you rescale your network, you have quadratic factor here, quadratic factor here, the quantity scale in vanilla. So if you rescale your network, your minimum is always the same. And if you take a limit, again, your minimum is always the same. So that means that uh, every limit of networks satisfying this must still satisfy this. But then suppose you can get uh, your, the double line, the double line falsifying the multiplicity one conjecture. Well, this means that you have some, some part of your network is going to converge to something very, very close like this. 
And then here there is some other part of your network. And also in this other side. But then I take P here, Q here, and you see you can have in a limited double, the double line means that these two guys get together, get close, and your minimum of these guys must be zero. Instead, since it's a limit of guy satisfying this, also the limit must satisfy this, and you have a contradiction. So all this stuff is to prove this inequality. It's a computation, not uh, immediate, but solid computation. Unfortunately, and we made a mistake in our very initial work on, on, uh, on the subject, this guy here is larger or equal to zero only when you have, when realizing your minimum, the other, the part of the network bounding your region here contains at most two triple junctions. which is actually true if, in general, your network has at most two triple junctions. So if you are able to show that when you go and get this minimum, the minimizing couple that determine the region APQ on the other part contains only two triple junctions, one and two. Suppose that this region was not like this, but was this. then this derivative is larger or equal to zero. Unfortunately, we, we try a lot, but we weren't able to, to have an argument to say that every time you take the minimum, you only have two triple junction in the red, in the pink part here. So the only, the only strong requirement that we made that uh, ensure this is that the initial network at all has only two triple junction. In that case, this line works. The recent uh, idea that we are going to uh, employ in order to, to prove multiplicity conjecture is completely different because we gave up following this line because we didn't find any reason why this must have only two triple junctions, the, the minimal, minimal regions, actually. But anyway, if you actually have uh, networks with few triple junctions, the analysis the multiplicity and conjecture is there, it's through its theorem, and then you have a, a, a real complete description of what happens at the singular time. This was done by, actually by me and uh, in our second paper by, well, putting together first a second paper with the Matteo Novaga, Tortorelli, and Magni. Alessandra Pluda made the full uh, analysis for the spoon, actually, the one that I showed you some lecture ago. The other guys are more or less scattered around. We use this, uh, this guys in several occasions like an example for the dis local description of singularities, what can happen. Because anyway, even if they are so easy, the easiest network you can imagine, they already encode a lot of phenomena that uh, happens during a network flow. OK, now I want to mention some other, some other questions, small and, and more important. Well, uniqueness issues are there in several, in uh, several points of this work. There are two kinds of issues. For regular networks, I, I recall I said, the natural uniqueness would be geometric uniqueness in the class of C2 in space, C1 in time networks, actually. We all believe it, but actually it's still uh, an open problem, and the, the difficulty in trying to get such result is the lack of maximum principle. For non-regular networks, uh, uniqueness is the uniqueness in this, um, uh, in this space of bracket flows. And at least in the nice, in the nice situation of uh, the, the cross that I showed you before, 
should be possible to prove uniqueness in the theorem of Hillman and Elvis Schulze. In general, it's not, but we hope at least for the generic initial network, which means if you have an initial network that doesn't give you uniqueness, perturbing a little, you, have, you can have a network that gives you uniqueness in the theorem, in the restarting theorem of Hillman and Neves, in the short time existence theorem of Hillman and Neves Schultz. The generic initial network should have uniqueness, but let me, let me say that we are very far in uh, having such a result at the moment. Genericity results are usually very delicate and not, uh, not easy to be proved. Another problem that we <coughs> I mentioned, this is not absolutely uh, super relevant, but actually it's a natural question that uh, the toll source is still open also for several cases of uh, mean curvature, smooth hypersurfaces for mean curvature flow, the uniqueness of blow up limits when you do the whisken or other blow up procedures actually. Another natural question that I mentioned to you yesterday, if actually type two, if actually type two singularity actually exists. We believe, uh, like for curves, uh, like for embedded curves, that they cannot have type two singularities, that uh, in the motion of an initial embedded network, you cannot have type two singularity. Just to remember, type two singularity is a singularity, where well, type one is a singularity like such that your curvature is of order one over square root of t minus t, type one, and type two otherwise. Which means that uh, at least on a subsequence, you don't have no constant such that k max is bounded by a constant divided by square root t minus t. Does not exist c such that it works like this. For curves, this is a good. Uh, dichotomy between singularities because for curves uh, one already knows that the curvature approaching a singularity is for curves, smooth curves, is always larger than one over square root of two t minus t. This no type two for embedded curves, embedded closed curve. Okay, for networks, we conjecture that this guy, are, for embedded network, this guy are not there. Again, there are no type two singularity. Moreover, for cur for networks. We are not even able to prove this, that the curvature getting close to a singularity goes to plus infinity at least with this rate. The, that also we conjecture is true. Again, conjecture also for nature. Because actually for networks, the only we are able to show at the moment is that K max is larger than one over t minus constant, t minus t up to one fourth, which is actually quite uh, weaker. And the reason is that uh, here is uh, obtained by being no maximum principle, so it's by means of pointwise estimate. Instead, all our estimates on the curvature are integral. And uh, taking integral and passing to uh, pointwise estimate, from integral to pointwise, you lose a uh, square, apparently. So possibly one needs to find another way to get to this. We also believe to this. 
even if uh, we even if all the well the two main uh, conjecture uniqueness of the blow up limits uh, uh, sorry you uniqueness of the limit network when t goes to big t and the multiplicity conjecture are true even with that uh, we with what we know at the moment, we could not, well, possibly we could be able to prove this, but uh, still uh, the conjecture about type 2 singularity will still be there, actually. So it's not a consequence of not knowing er enough about singularities. And actually, that was exactly what I was saying. In the case of bound of uh, this is possibly after the multiplicity one conjecture, the most important open conjecture. The uniqueness of the limit network at the singular time in the case when a region is collapsing down. It's possibly the second main open, main open problem. Another very large uh, bunch of conjecture comes from the analysis, uh, which means uh, proving existence or non-existence according to fixing the shape, the shapes that I showed you yesterday in that gallery of Thomas Mannen, of actually of shrinkers, studying possible properties or, and uh, hoping to get to some uh, full classification. Studying on properties, well, there are several conjectures. means, for instance, I can mention a couple of conjectures about the space of shrinkers. Well, one, uh, wait, what I found the nicest is the fact, the strong fact that the possible shape of shrinks are finite, which is due to Tom Manen, that also has a partial argument, but not a full proof. But for instance, there are sub-conjecture of this. For instance, that uh, if you take a, an unbounded shrinker, we saw that the unbounded part must be half lines. And uh, a natural conjecture is that uh, you cannot have more than five half lines going to plus infinity in a shrinker, which is related to the fact that uh, regions with less than six edges contract uh, with six edges, uh, keep their area constant, and with more than six ed edges, they expand. So actually, in a way, this is reflected on the number of unbounded part of a possible shrinker. This is another open problem. We would like to have uh, better estimates in the restarting theorem of Ilman and Neve Schulze related to that construction that I mentioned to you before, because actually this uh, well, the, the, the existence of that bracket flow is performed at the end, taking a lot of subsequences in all this construction. Construct, replace, glue, then take a subsequence. At the end, you get something converging. And uh, in several points, you take this subsequence losing or making a rough, rough estimate. So you, you will have, and this means that you don't have so much control on the behavior of the curvature when you restart. The point is that you start with something which has bounded curvature, possibly the limit in the first case. Here you have standard 120 degrees. You have this guy. This guy has bounded curvature. And then you restart it, opening some way by means of ENS theorem. And if you look at the, at the curvature function, this is for big T and this is for T larger than T. If you look at, at for instance, the maximum of the curvature, a big T we say that it's some K max bounded, bounded by, by C. And immediately after, because of the construction, the maximum of the curvature goes like this, comes from plus infinity. Well, not going to zero or something. But there is a coming from plus infinity. Doing, if you imagine what's happening here, I told you, it's like 
for instance, in the stress situation, that immediately there is a shrink and expander getting out from this. And if you imagine that uh, get looking at things back in time, this guy is contracting to become a standard cross, but the angle here is 120. Angle here is 120. And it must contract to an angle of 60. So the curvature, in order to do this, must go to plus infinity, back in time. Forward in time means that immediately, for t larger than t, the curvature is coming down from plus infinity, and then going on till the next singularities. What we would like to have that it's missing now in, the, in their work, to have some precise control in the way this curvature is coming down from plus, a more precise control, quantitative, the way it's coming, is coming down to plus infinity. This is in the, in the framework to, of uh, showing that singularities cannot accumulate. If you have information on the way that curvature is going down like that, well, you can hope to have better information. You can hope to have information on how long after t your flow must be again smooth. How long you would like to have a bound from below, depending on this, uh, on this behavior, on the time of existence of a smooth flow, in order to say that next singularity is too far to accumulate, actually. But to do this, you need uh, really to push, uh, to get really inside their proof and uh, make, get uh, better estimates in some parts of the construction. Final, final, uh, final problem that I want to present, uh, what are generic stable singularities? Again, in very special situations like the one that I showed you at the beginning, where we are super symmetric. It's a symmetric pentagon shrinking down and producing a five point. But you can ask yourself, okay, I modify a little bit one of this curve, breaking the symmetry. It's still true that you get a five points, or maybe my modification here makes that this curve vanish before the shrinking. So you get a four region. That means that here in the Liberty, you no more get a five guys like this, but a five by a four-line guy. So in a way, you're asking yourself, how much are stable these, the singularities I see in the flow? If I modify a little bit uh, my, my network, uh, is I still see the same change of topology, the same structure? And this is a very natural question because uh, if you reduce the number of stable singularities, that means that uh, for the general network, we have very few kinds of singularities. So less singularities, better understanding of your flow. Actually, it's easy to see that you can, you can uh, um, analyze this fact by, again, by looking at a blow up. And uh, what can be seen that if you can get a blow up, uh, which is a line, or a cross, or a circle, which is a very special uh, network, uh, well, if you modify your, uh, your network, as I, said, as I said before, you get again another singularity and again the same type of blow up. Other conjectural stable blow up are the bracket spoon, the guy is called the lens, and this guy here, which are all shrinker. No more with uh, an Iger number of edges. So four, uh, this is a conjecture, again due to Thomas Mannen, that these guys are the only dynamically stable shrinkers. So if you have a singularities with the blow up uh, doing like this, uh, you perturb a little your network, you still see the same kind of singularity. Which also means if they are the only ones that you have a region of more than three edges collapsing down, in the blow up, you see a full region in the shrinker. 
If you perturb it four or more, if you perturb it a little, what is going to happen that possibly one of the four edges collapsed before the collapse of the, of the full region. And you get something like this guy. And this is, a, again, this is not, well, this is, there are possibilities because actually you have actually to compute the stability of these guys, which is actually dynamical, but you can do it. It's a computation, not so easy. The difficult part is the only part. It should be possible to prove that these guys are stable, that they are the only, sta only ones which are stable. It could be more difficult with the only doubt on this guy. This could be unstable. Yeah, we all, <laughs> these two guys, we are almost sure that they are stable. There are some doubt. Some that didn't, um, doesn't doubt. We doubt a little bit. Computation are not completely easy. That this guy maybe is unstable. Which means, actually, as I say, the conclusion that generically, for the generic initial network, only region with three edges can collapse. If a region wants to collapse, generically, before, it must before reduce the number of its edges to three. Then it can collapse to three or less than three. Final remark, what are the possible future? Very far, in my opinion to try to extend all this kind of analysis to higher dimensions. So the most natural guy to study is the cluster of bubbles. And in particular, the easiest one to test uh, the ideas, which is simply a double bubble, which is the two-dimensional analog of the theta network, actually. And uh, what is the, the difficulties here in generalizing this uh, this analysis to the two-dimensional situation, well, even from curves, from small closed curve to surfaces, closed surfaces in R3, there is a huge change in difficulties, a huge change in, uh, uh, in the results that you can hope. A smooth closed, embedded smooth closed curve becomes, con stays smooth, becomes convex, gets round and round, and then shrinks down to a point. It's absolutely false for a surface, can develop singularities, and uh, you want to continue the flow, sometimes it can break into pieces, and so on. So you can imagine that also here there is a huge gap between one-dimensional and two-dimensional situation. Moreover, here there's also the point that in the network case, you have two, le two levels of uh, objects, curves and triple junction. If you deal with the interfaces, two dimensional interfaces, you have surfaces bounding your balls, lines where three surfaces can arrive, and points where four surfaces, where four regions can arrive in this point. You can imagine something like the angles with the carbon atom, actually, all inside of a tetrahedron, if you connect the regular tetrahedron, if you connect the vertices to the um, to the body center, actually. So you have three levels and three levels of equation to study. Your system becomes much more complicated. And at the moment, well, there are several approaches. The one of uh, Felix by means of, uh, well, generalized approach by means of uh, minimizing movement, the approach by bracket flow by Tonegawa that you possibly saw previous week. but. Uh, in the world of the smooth approach, that was the one that we tried to follow as close as possible for the networks. Actually, I'm aware only of a couple of papers. This paper by Deppner, Garke, and Kosaka, that they prove short time existence for very special interfaces, not for the general case, and uh, uniqueness similar to the TRMs that I show you for regular networks, satisfying compatibility condition, the TR more complicated. And uh, another paper with, uh, containing also estimates, more quantitative, again, only for special in initial interfaces by Felix Schultz and Brian White. Special initial interfaces means that uh, the initial uh, 
bu the initial uh, bubble, cluster of bubble, must only contains, uh, it's not possible that four regions arrive at the point. You only have two levels. We have surfaces and a curve where three, three surfaces arrive, but not a point where four regions are concurring, which actually means that more or less you are studying the double bubble situation. But, uh, well, in the smooth uh, approach, I only am aware of these two cases in this special, there is no theory and reason for the general case that would be very interesting to have. Okay, just to conclude, since I have just very few minutes, I want to ask you a question, <laughs> or let you, <laughs> an open problem, a very elementary to say open problem, that uh, we are not able to do it. So possibly you are young, uh, more energy, you are able to find out a good argument. I will be, we will be very interested in, uh, in, having, uh, in having an answer. It will be very interesting, but well, it will simplify some parts of uh, our, some arguments, some parts of arguments in our work. And I'm going to state it absolutely independently of the network flow. It's a technical, in my opinion, nice question that could be useful for us. Well, if you tell you what is known, if you take a closed curve, C2, in the plane, well, it can be proved, well, if you assume that the curvature is smaller than one, for your curve, it can be proved that the area of your curve is larger than pi. Seems innocuous, but let me tell you, it's absolutely non-elementary. If one is interested, I can give you the, a reference to some proof. There are several proofs around. In the star-shaped case or convex case, it's easier, actually, but in the general case, I'm not asking anything about the curve. Simple C2 curve, closed curve. It's uh, absolutely smart proof for the general case, but I suggest you to try to do it by yourself. More precisely, if you, have, if you are in this situation, the interior contains a disk of radius one, which actually implies this. So if you have this, you have D1 is contained in the, I call it, omega, which implies this. Okay. Notice that you have this. It can be useful. It's a hint for your proof. The, the integ sorry, quite tired. Is a, a hint for your proof. Okay, what we are interested in, we are interested in networks. You can imagine this is related to shrinking regions. So now I consider instead of this, this is a theorem. Instead I have a conjecture. I suppose we have a region curved C2 with five curves or less, but if you can do it with five, you can do also with less, with angles 120. A curved polygon with angles 120. Five edges. And I want to conclude the same. <clears throat> I want to conclude that if uh, K is smaller than one on this curve, then there exists epsilon such that, positive such that uh, the area of omega is, more, is larger than epsilon. This is false if I have six corners. Take a regular hexagon, 
curvature is zero, so it's bounded by one, but you can make it smaller as you prefer. So this is false if you have too many corners. Suggestion to connect the two things. In this case, integral of k is equal to pi six. Uh, pi, uh, yes, should be six. Uh, third, sorry. Pi third. For hexagon, integral of k is zero. If you have an hexagon, a curved hexagon, with angles 120 degrees, the integral of k is zero, always. So this guy is positive. So you can also, I think this can suggest you how to generalize the result if you are able to prove this. Because, let me tell you, it's open. And it would be very interesting because it will simplify some arguments in our job. Actually, we don't need in our, in our work because this question, we ask it for moving regions so they have other special properties so the conclusion is true. For the special region, moving regions that we use in the network flow. But the question can be put in general. Can we ask in general? And uh, you can see this, which is, in my opinion, in particular, the first one is independent interest for people in geometric analysis. Because actually, it's a kind of uh, isoperimetric inequality, reverse isoperimetric inequality, without the perimeter entering, only curvature and a contained area. I can also tell you that the Niger dimension is false. There are counterexamples. So try to find a counterexample for surfaces, for instance. But uh, actually, a consequence of this is that here, k squared max times the area for a closed curve is always larger than pi. And the consequence of this, if we are able to, to show it, would be that k squared max of a larger than epsilon for some epsilon. Open for curvilinear <coughs> polygonals with these properties here. OK, I think uh, the, my course finish here. Let me, before closing, and uh, thanking you, uh, thanks the organizer. <laughs> for the very nice uh, week here in Trieste. Let me also thank Alessandra Pluda that left today morning, <laughs> since uh, several of my slides were based on uh, <coughs> other slides that she, she made for uh, in another occasion. In particular, all the figures was done by Alessandra. And uh, let me also thank you for your attention and following the course till the end.